Alright guys, so I've got two NES systems here. They both look identical, but they're not. I've made a slight modification to this one. It's a very easy modification that you can do at home, and it will make your NES more likely to read the games the first time you put them in and the first time you try to turn on a game. Now let me show you something. This one's stock. No game inside. Now when you turn on a stock NES, what happens without a game in it? The power button blinks over and over again. This is because of a chip inside this, most people refer to as the 10 NES chip. Now the 10 NES chip is basically a security chip that Nintendo put into the system mainly to stop pirated games and so over here they wanted to put this chip inside the NES and what this chip inside the NES is doing is when it's not sure if the game inside the NES is uh, legit or not it resets the CPU and that causes this cycle so right now the 10 NES is resetting the CPU resetting the CPU resetting the CPU and this is what a stock NES will do without a game in it. Because without a game in it, the 10 NES chip's not sure what's going on. It thinks maybe there's a pirate game in there right now. So it's going to just continually reset the NES. Now, if we unhook this one, And we hook up this one. Once again, no game inside. And we turn this one on. We'll see that it's not resetting itself over and over again. It's actually just staying on. The 10 NES chip has been disabled in this one, so it, it can no longer reset the CPU. Of course, this means we can play pirate games on here. Um, we can play different region uh, PAL games. You know, the 10 NES chip's not there to look and reset the CPU. What it also means is that in some instances, take Metroid here for example, you put in the game, you turn the power on, and you start to see the title screen, but then it goes into that reset uh, loop. It's a little bit annoying because well, what that means is that it actually read the game, but the 10 NES chip didn't make full contact with the part of the chip inside this cartridge that corresponds to the 10 NES chip. So the 10 NES chip isn't making that connection with the corresponding chip inside here to tell it that it's a legit game, and so it's resetting. Let me show you what I mean. So here's a prime example, and you've probably seen this happen before. You put in your game, you turn on your NES, and for that first second, you get the title screen, and you think it's going to work, and then it resets. And it keeps resetting, and it keeps resetting, and it keeps resetting until you, you know, take the game out and try again. But the fact that you're seeing the title screen there for the first second is telling you that the NES read the ROM chip off the cartridge just fine. It's reading the game just fine, but it's not reading the corresponding security chip, and the 10 NES chip inside here is resetting the NES over and over again. So this is a prime example where if the 10 NES chip wasn't in here, and if it wasn't for that security factor, this thing would have loaded up the game and you'd be playing the game right now. So in this one, that will never happen. Put the game in, hit the power button, now it didn't read the game, it didn't read the ROM file in the game, but at least it's not resetting over and over again. Try it again, and there we go. It will never get to the title screen and go into that reset cycle. It will never do that. Once you have that 10 nest chip removed, if it gets to the title screen, it's going to go. 
So this makes it more likely that your games are going to work the first time you put them in. It's going to make less hassle on these old NES systems when you're trying to play your games. And it's very easy to do, so I'm going to show you how to do that now. First things first, Phillips screwdriver. Unscrew all six screws in the bottom. Turn it over. Pop the top off. Now you've got one, two, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There's eleven screws holding not only this top metal plate on, but the motherboard into the actual base here. So we need to unscrew all these screws. So once you have these eleven screws out, you can now get this metal plate off. It's just an RF shield. You'll see that inside of a lot of old consoles. Now, we're not done yet. There's still four more screws. These ones are under the metal plate, so you have to get the metal plate off first. Now, all the screws are the same length, except for these two here. So you do want to keep that in mind when you're putting it back together. These two screws here are a little bit longer than the rest, and all the rest are the same. Once those last four screws are out, you can actually start to take the motherboard out. First things first is you can remove the tray here. Now we can pretty much just flip the board out. And you'll see on the bottom side of the board we have another metal plate. So we'll take that off. I don't think... okay. We've got these two wires that are holding the metal plate off. That's the main power connection going into the motherboard. And this one's one of the controller ports. You see the other controller ports here. I'm just going to unhook these so I can get the metal plate just completely out of the way. And you can get a really good look at the board here. Okay. So when you're looking at the motherboard, we're looking at it, uh, you know, at, from the right side. Everything here, all the all the the fonts, all the writing on the chips and the board, is we're reading it. It's not upside down. So, looking at the board like this, this chip right here is the 10 Nest chip. This is the little guy that's responsible. This is that security chip, the one that when it can't read the game 100%, it's going, oh no, it might be a pirate game. Let's reset the system. Let's reset, reset, reset. This is the culprit right here. Okay, here's the RF uh, box and the AV output, and it's 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 just up and to the left of that one, or it's the most bottom right chip of them all. It does say Nintendo on the chip. I'm going to zoom in on this 10 Nest chip so we can get a really good look at it, and I'm going to show you how to disable it. You will not believe how easy it is to do. Okay, so here's that 10 Nest chip. Like I said, it's pretty much the smallest, one of the smaller chips on the board. Very far bottom right. And it says Nintendo on it. If you want to be really sure you're looking at the right one, it's got a number on it. 3193A. This is the 10 Nest chip. Now, Looking at it as we are now, if we start at the bottom and we count four over, one, two, three, four, you'll see we're missing a pin here. We're missing a contact. This is how you disable the 10 Nest chip. It's as easy as breaking this contact or breaking this pin off. And this little box cutter here is actually exactly what I used and basically all I did was, let me switch hands with the camera here make sure we don't block the light is I basically just counted one, two, three, four and I sort of jimmied the blade underneath the leg you can see these little legs that make the contact with the board and you can basically slip the blade 
underneath the leg like that. So I basically just slipped the blade underneath this leg, pried it up, and it popped right off. No soldering, no special tools. Took about five seconds. Once you get the board out, you know, taking everything apart and getting to the bottom side of the board is really the hardest part of this. And, uh, you know, prying that leg off, breaking it off, took five seconds. So once you've broken that contact, bottom, fourth pin over, put it all back together, you're done. This thing will never reset like that again.